Hey everyone, welcome back to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith and this is... Luke Smith. And we're ready to start our playthrough of Ashes. Rise of the Phoenix Board. Yes, this is a game we've been playing quite a bit lately. Off screen. Yes. You, uh, haven't, you haven't missed any videos. No, you haven't, don't that's right, you haven't missed anything yet. I've been using Maoni Viper a lot and Luke's been using Aerodel Summer Guard. You've won a few, I've won a few. So it'll be interesting to see how things go here now that we're joining you guys. I have a separate video I created where I go over all of the different cards in each of our decks as well as our Phoenix Born and our Dice Powers. I'd recommend checking that out because in this video we're not going to go into details about all the effects. We'll summarize them quickly and then keep moving so we can just focus on the gameplay. Again, I'll put a link to that video in the description of this one along with the full instructional video if you need to check that out as well. First we have to decide who's going to be the first player, right? And that involves rolling some dice so let's go to the table and see what happens. All right, here we go. I often get asked, so let me just answer the question now. These dice trays are actually picture frames that I converted. Looking at the results, I have two basic, and Luke, you have? Three. That means Luke gets the first player token, and we can get started. Now look at this. Luke rolled four power side dice. I only rolled one. <laughs> <laughs> you do have more basics, though. What do you want to do? You're going first. For my main action, yes. I'm going to play the card Summon Blue Jaguar. Any side actions? No. Well, I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to play Summon Gilder, and I'm also not going to use a side action. For my main action, I'm going to use the card Summon Blue Jaguar, which summons a blue jaguar. <laughs> How shocking. Okay. So that exhausts it. I need to place it. one Fatigue. Yes. And then I need to use up two Basic. So Luke's the first to get a unit out. You gonna use a side action? Yes. All right. I'm going to use a card named Root Armor. All right. It uses up one of my leaves. Yes. And it gives plus two life to any unit I choose, and I choose Blue Jaguar. <laughs> that makes sense. So now this Blue Jaguar has a total life of four, along with that attack value of two. Right now, Luke could attack my Phoenix Born for an easy two damage. So if I want to stop that, I could summon a Gilder, so I'd have a blocker, but. Instead, I'm going to place Summon Silver Snake. That's my main action. And I don't think I'll take a side action at this point. On my turn, I'm going to play Summon Miss Spirit. And that'll be it. Hmm, I think I know what I want to do here. I'm going to play Open Memories. This is an action spell that's going to cost me a heart here and a basic. And then I can go digging into my draw deck and pick out one card that I want. It will get added to my hand and then I have to reshuffle my deck. And Luke, just so you know, I won't be taking a side action. Okay, I found the card that I want to add to my hand, and the rest of my deck I will shuffle up. Luke, over to you. I'm going to summon a Miss Spirit. All right, that's going to cost you a mask-looking face. Yes. And I can summon another if I spend one basic, which I shall. Right, that, that does always seem like a good idea. If you can throw out that extra one, why not, right? So now you've got three units, and I have none. I'm not worried. Okay, I'm a little worried. All right, I know I'm leaving myself open to attack, but I am going to play Summon Silver Snake. So now these are both Focus 1. And that ability says I'll be able to place a status token on Silver Snakes when I bring them into play, which will give them a starting attack value. No side action for me. I'm going to play Butterfly Monk. <laughs> I feel like Luke and I are just kind of sizing each other up. We haven't, uh, I haven't brought any forces out. Luke could attack, but he hasn't yet. I'm waiting to see what you're going to do. <laughs> I'm waiting to see what you're going to do. But you have units out, so you kind of have that ability to be patient. I'm just mostly nervous here. Going to do a side action, Luke? I could use my side action to get rid of your snake die using my wolf's power. Right. Oh, yes. The ability here would let you yes. uh, remove. Yeah, you could get rid of my one decent die yeah. I have here. But I have other plans. Well, I don't mind keeping this, so that's good to know. All right. I am going to, on my turn, start with a side action, and I'm going to meditate. So I'm going to discard the top card of my deck. I can also discard one from my hand or from my spell board, but this is what I'm going to get rid of. It's a bit of a gamble. Hopefully this isn't something really great. Ah, uh, it's Summon a Gilder. You know what? I'm not too disappointed to lose that one, actually. But now I can convert one of the dice in my pool to a side of my choosing. I'm going to convert this one here to a frog. For my main action, I'm going to summon a Silver Snake. And that's going to cost me both of these dice and again, because I have the Focus 1 ability unlocked, I'm going to put a status token on my snake, and now its attack value is equal to the number of status tokens, so it's 1. 
And I'm going to gaze. You're going to stare down my silver snake. Yes. Very bold. Yes. The blue jaguar has a gaze ability. Now that's going to cost you a basic die, Luke. And then it's going to allow you to put an exhaust token on a unit that I just summoned. Thankfully, the effects of the silver snake are inexhaustible, but now it can't defend or attack. How rude. I am going to use my summon butterfly monk and summon one butterfly monk. <laughs> that makes sense. That cost one frog. All right. And then that's going to go into the battlefield as well. Boy, you're like kind of encroaching on my space here. You've got so many <laughs> units. Maybe we'll just slide this one. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll overlap these mist spirits and, and put it here. How about, how about that? Okay. So four to one. This doesn't seem like a fair fight, Luke. And it's not going to be. <laughs> I believe it. My turn's going to be pretty simple. I'm going to summon a Gilder. That's going to cost me one of these die. Puts a Gilder into the field. When I summon a Gilder, I'm also able to deal one damage to a target unit. And I think I'll pick your monk here, Luke, because normally when it dies, it can heal something, but there's nothing here to heal. So I want it gone now before you actually get more damage. All right, that's my turn. I've cleared the field a little bit. I feel good about that. I have a couple of units out. Back over to you, Luke. I'm going to play the card Shifting Mist. That uses one face, so I'm just going to use a wolf. As my slide action, I'm going to use my Phoenix Born's main ability. That's going to cost me a leaf, so I'll just use a frog. Right, and it's going to do two damage to a target unit. Goodbye, Gilder. <laughs> okay, well that's not so great, but it has this special ability that says when it's destroyed, I can place one status token on a target unit. I'm going to place that on my silver snake, so now my snake has an attack of two. Well, as my main action, I am going to call upon the realms. That's going to let me change the face of three of my dice. And these dice aren't even bad, but I really need them on their higher level. So I'm going to convert this one and this one. I'm putting them at their power sides because that's the best side for them. Now here's the problem. I'm going to talk my strategy out loud a little bit here. If I don't convert this one to a snake, then on Luke's turn, he could simply use this die to remove the one snake I have and then I won't be able to summon a silver snake if that's what I wanted to do. But again, I can always mitigate the luck of the dice here by simply discarding another card to then convert that one to a snake face because honestly, I think I'd rather have this one converted. We'll see if this works out for me. And as a side action, I'm going to cause one damage to a target unit. I'm going to target this mist spirit. So that one's dead. And the snake's consumability says that whenever an opponent's unit is destroyed as a result of something that I'm doing, I get to put a status token on it. The snake is getting stronger. So Luke, over to you. I think I'm just going to have my Mist Spirit attack your Phoenix Born. And you know what? I can't block, right? Because this is exhausted. Yep. So I guess I'm just going to have to take that one wound. That's it for me. All right. For my turn, I am going to summon a Silver Snake. Spending these two dice, and again, because I have this spell focused, I can place a token, a status token there. Gazed. Oh yes, of course. He's going to gaze with his blue jaguar, which is going to put an exhaustion token on. And that's why I didn't want to get rid of one of your dice. Right, because if you had gotten rid of that one to just remove the pink die, I still had another one, right, that yes. I could meditate. Well, now you've shut down. Everything I could do as far as bringing out units. And that's also why I didn't attack the blue jaguar. Yeah, because then that would have exhausted it and you would have lost the gaze yes. ability. Okay. All right, Samari Pants, it's your turn. What are you going to do? Attack your Phoenix Born. <laughs> yes, now you can attack. No worries, right? So this gets exhausted and I take two damage. I'm looking. Luke has no more dice he can use, no more effects that he can use. I have one card left, but I'm not going to play it, possibly because I can't. And there's no more units for me to use. I think I'm going to pass. Ditto. All right, we both passed one after the other. So now it's time for the recovery phase. If any of the units had wounds and had the ability to recover, we remove those now. But that's not the case. We can move on to removing exhaustion tokens. One from every card that's in play, which I'll take off of mine. And Luke, man, you have a bunch to remove. Yeah. Yeah, you were a lot busier than I was during this round. Now we also have the option to exhaust any dice that we haven't used yet, those in our active pool. I'm actually realizing while we were playing, Luke's dice were in his exhaustion pool and he moved them to his active side. <laughs> so, so we did it right. We were just moving things in the wrong direction on his end. I'm sure you guys caught that. 
we'll make sure in the second round we're matched up. I have two dice in my active pool that are decent. I could try to re-roll them, hoping for something better, but I think I'll leave them as is, so I don't accidentally roll them into basics. Speaking of which, it's time to roll the dice. Let's get out our trays. I should also mention at the end of the round, I become the new first player. All right, let's roll up our dice, Luke. Not bad, Luke. I see a couple of power dice. Not so many for me, but that's okay. Don't you mean none? <laughs> yeah, I have exactly zero power-sided dice. Ah, I'm not too worried about that. The dice are just one of the tools in my arsenal. Well, Luke, what's next? Discard and draw. Right. Um, I don't want to discard what I have. I have no cards. Right, so you can just draw. I'll draw up here as well. And ooh, ooh, some good things here. Um, I guess we'll turn it over to you guys at this point. It's the end of the first round. I've taken some wounds on my Phoenix Born. I'm down to 19 life. Luke, you have 16, so you've closed the gap a little bit there. Not bad. But I have a, I have a snake here that's getting pretty oh. powerful, right? He's, he's going to be a threat to you pretty soon. Hopefully next turn I can do some damage. Normally we turn the game over to you guys and have you give us some suggestions about what should happen next. We're going to do that here, but I want to say... Ashes is a game where that's a little harder to do because there's there's so much interaction, isn't there? Yes. You're doing this, you're doing this, and... It's, it's like there's they're smaller decisions we're making, right? Yeah. Back and forth. Because I could do something that you're like, oh, I thought he was going to do this. Now it's totally it messed up my plan. It changes the plans. Yeah, exactly. But I'm still going to show you what I have in my hand. Maybe you can give a suggestion for what you think I should lead with. What should my first turn really be about? And then if you want to propose kind of what you think the overall strategy should be, that will be helpful as well. Put that in the comments below. If you like what someone says, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like what they say, propose your own suggestion. Maybe that will get chosen. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below. And until the next episode, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching.